So you guys might notice things are a little bit different around here. I actually moved my entire setup. I put a picture of it in the community tab on this channel. If you head over there, you can see where I've got my desk now. It's actually back up against the wall. I'm actually really excited about it. I got some new lights. They're Elgato key lights. Uh, so the whole setup's different. We're gonna be arranging the whole room, creating uh, more of a vibe in here. And uh, I'm really excited for that to continue on. But for now, we're just creating tutorials right here at the desk with kind of just my printer in the background, right? All right, so in this one, we're gonna be looking at how to make, it's like a 3D poster card effect. I say poster card because that's sort of the technique or the thing that we're gonna use in Photoshop. But it's a really quick way to, I guess, sort of skew and give perspective to your images. Um, and you can actually add a little bit of uh, depth of field to it as well. So that's that one takes a little bit of render time, but I'll show you how to quickly do this, whether you're trying to create mock-ups or maybe you're just working on um, thumbnails, which is what I did. I had done a thumbnail for Pacers Gaming, um, but we'll hop into it. It's gonna be in Photoshop and uh, let's get started. So I snapped a quick image of my Spotify so you guys can kind of see how you could do this potentially with like a website or uh, some other app design. And basically all we're gonna do is make sure we have that layer selected in our layers panel. Go up to 3D, down to new mesh from layer, and it's this postcard that we're gonna click on. It's going to ask you if you want to uh, switch to a 3D workspace because you're about to create a 3D layer. I don't really like to do that, but if you want to switch to a 3D workspace and kind of play around with that, you can. I'm just not as familiar with it but there's a couple tools that I use really quick with this effect. So I hit no, but I can still access those. So I'm gonna hit no, and then we're in this space and I can actually zoom in and zoom out like normal, command or control plus and minus, but we have this sort of 3D layer now that's a postcard, right? That's the postcard effect. Up here in the very top, we have 3D mode and we have some tools that we can utilize. This first one here on the right is like a zoom in and out. So if we click and drag up and down, we can zoom in and out of our image. And you can see how it's sort of clipping it to the bounds of what our original canvas size is. So we can zoom in and out. We can also, let's see what this one is. I believe this is slide. We have a pan, we have a roll, we have an orbit. So each of these are controlling the camera. So you're kind of like moving around your little postcard effect and looking at it in different ways. I like to use the orbit and that's gonna allow me to sort of just rotate this guy around. And you can see right away how by just clicking and dragging up and down, we can get sort of a pretty neat effect uh, right off the bat with orbit. You can use each one of these. They're gonna be doing a slightly different thing, whether it's rotating uh, potentially panning or sliding back and forth. And once you get it to where you want, you can still use your transform tools. So like command or control T and we can transform this layer. It'll convert it to a smart object, which is fine because we can kind of dive into that smart object to continue to edit that 3D effect, but it'll convert our layer to a smart object and then allow us to scale up that smart object. So if you wanted to fill in your space here, just like that, this is like a really cool shot of the Spotify app. And it's a really quick and cool way to sort of rotate whatever it is, a flat object and create more of a 3D look with it. Now, if we double click into this guy, maybe we can get back into our 3D setup and you notice that we have all the tools again. And in order for you to create a depth of field, which is like putting some of the image out of focus, you need to click on this little 3D cube. If you don't see that, go up to window down to 3D and it's gonna pop out that menu. And then we're going to look at the current view. Don't click on default camera. I believe that's gonna reset your camera settings. So you'd have to go back to uh, completely fixing your little 3D effect again. So current view, once I have that selected, I can see over here in the properties panel which if you don't have that, you can go up to window, down to properties. I can see that I have some choices with the, I guess the camera lens, if you will. And I have a depth of field choice as well. So we can adjust the distance, which I believe if we select on the zoom tool, 
up here and hold Option or Alt, we can actually click on a certain point of our image to set that distance. Notice as I'm holding Option or Alt and clicking, the distance over here is changing. So further away, distance is further. Closer up, distance is closer. We need to add a little bit of depth to this. Once we do that, we can start to see the render begin to happen a little bit. You can see on the left hand side here, very out of focus on the far end here, very out of focus. Remember, this is a 3D layer. We're in a 3D space. There is actual distance and depth to this now, just like the real world, right? And if we hold option, remember I'm on the zoom tool, I can actually click on different points and say, no, nah, this is what I want in focus over here, this left bar, the rest is gonna get out of focus. Or the furthest point here, that's in focus, this. So that's pretty cool, it's a pretty cool way to actually set your focal point. Um, and I, I want it here in the center, I can do that. We can save this and then we can bounce out of that back to this view. And you'll notice a couple things here. First, that yeah, we do have sort of a blurrier foreground, blurrier background and a sharp center, but the blurriness isn't the highest quality. And that's because we haven't rendered that 3D layer. So what we need to do is actually double click into our scene. So we have to be in that 3D space. We can click on the little 3D cube and go down to render. And now this is going to start rendering our scene. I haven't really gotten into all of the details on what we're rendering or to what level we are rendering our scene. Um, I'm assuming it's probably on the highest quality version, but it's gonna take a little bit to render the depth of field effect. If you don't care about that effect, you can still use this postcard option to rotate, scale, skew, whatever your object and to create that look without the depth of field and you don't have to really go through this render process, which on my computer it looks like is gonna take maybe five minutes. Um, so I'm gonna actually use this for the thumbnail. So you guys have already seen that blurred out effect, but it's gonna take a little bit of time to render that perfectly. Um, but you wanna make sure you do that before you export that file or save that JPEG because you really want that the blurry depth of field to be as high, high of quality as possible. That's pretty much it for this tutorial. It was a really quick one. Uh, it's just a really quick effect in general that you guys can use. I'm probably gonna use this a lot more in thumbnails to create some more interest. Um, so one of, the, one of the ways that we use it, we actually will record gameplay at work and we'll like create tutorials around the game NBA 2K. And a lot of times I have maybe some screen captures or something from that gameplay. And this is a quick effect to make it look a lot different than what you normally see. So normally you see just like that flat screen, but like you can tell, like this makes the Spotify app look crazy cool. Like it's sort of like one of those mockups that you guys might've seen in different design files or design assets, um, like business card mockups, things like that. Really quick way to create a 3D effect. Um, let me know if you have any questions down below. I'm Spencer from Pixel and Bracket. I'll see you guys next time. <sighs> yeah, so I wanna put like some cool lighting back here. We're gonna get some shelves over here. And because I moved this desk up against the wall, which you can't really see in here, but you can tell that it's a little bit different than where I had it before. Um, I'm actually gonna have, I think at least five different filming angles. I only had one before in this room and that's sort of this angle that you guys are seeing. I think I'm gonna have five. So sometimes we'll film like coming back and you'll see my setup behind me. Uh, we're thinking about getting a couch in here, maybe like over here. And I'm gonna put some, I think I'm gonna get some cool lights like RGB, like get some color in here. Make it more like a legitimate YouTube channel. That's what I'm thinking.